I have begun my exploration of Abruzzo, a rustic area of Italy's south-central region that takes you back in time. From ancient fishing structures turned culinary destinations to rocky mountain caves that sheltered spirituality and sweet little towns packed with history, this is definitely a side of Italy you've never seen. Join us in the second part of this journey through Abruzzo, traveling to Pacentro and Scano, some of Italy's most beautiful towns. Only two hours away from Rome, it's hard to imagine how the rustic region of Abruzzo has been kept a secret for so long. I made my way to one of Abruzzo's hill towns, which is on the list of Italy's most beautiful villages. Well, I'm on my way to Pacentro, and uh, this tight and twisty roads is just right for this car. The Audi Q2's light, responsive steering helps maneuver through tight spaces, so cornering feels solid. It's a lot of fun to drive through bends and turns and with this compact size, I think it's the best car to take when exploring the narrow streets of old towns. We're going up, up to 700 meters. Perched on a couple of hills, Pacentro overlooks the Pelina Valley with incredible views of the surrounding mountains. And from below, I'm sure the view of its medieval castle's imposing towers is a sight to behold. Being on a strategic location, the town had to be protected, so a castle was built over its hilltop. Today, Three of the Castello Caldora's four towers remain intact. A fourth tower that makes up Pacentro's medieval skyline is the bell tower of the Santa Maria de la Misericordia. Its gleaming white facade is made of stone from the Mayela Mountains. Inside, we find beautiful examples of religious images by Pacentro's artisans. Its oldest church, the small church of San Marcello, still has its 11th century fresco displayed in front. Francesco Palozzi, a fellow aviator, introduced me to his uncle Fernando, a medical doctor and the former mayor of Pacentro who shows me around his charming town. This is the municipal house. Oh, this one, right there, yes. All, all the house. I see. So... For uh, 15 okay. years, my, my second house. I see. And you can stay here, you live here? Yes. So you were mayor here for 15 yes. years. <laughs> it's a nice town you have. Yes, nice town. It's, uh, Little town, my beautiful, beautiful town. Very nice houses. See, all original. Original, yes. Mm. The Borghi, Borghi is the old the country. Of Italy. Beautiful, okay. And Pacenti is one of twenty Borg in Italy. So only twenty. How many people here? The last year ago, four or five thousand people. Nice. After uh, immigration. In the world, yeah. Australia, America, Canada, 1,000, mille. Oh, 1,000 only? Oh, very few people. Yes. So you know almost everybody. But perhaps some of its most famous residents are the people who live in this house. Pop star 
Madonna's grandparents. So, the house of grandfather of yes. Madonna. Ooh. But is anyone living here? This is the second cousin Madonna living here. I see. Fernando told us of the tragedy that befell Abruzzo in 2009 and how Madonna pledged to help the town. 30 years ago, in Abruzzo, yes. happened the terremoto. Come si dice terremoto? Earthquake. Madonna called me because... Mayor. Uh, ha dato, come si dice, ha offerto 500, wow. 500.000 dollari, half million dollars for Croce Rossa International. Red Cross. Sì. Pacentro has many treasures. And one of them happens to belong to Fernando's sister, Teresa, and her husband, Carmine, at the heart of town. Housed in a 16th century building, the Taverna Deli Caldora is an award-winning restaurant gathering accolades in Italy's slow food movement. The restaurant proudly serves traditional regional cuisine, along with the famous Montepulciano di Abruzzo, some of which are produced in the family's vineyard. So, Margarita, this is uh, one of Paolo's wines. Yeah, it's the first Paolo's wine, biological wine. Yeah. Which we yeah, need no sulfates. Yes. No chemical thing. No chemicals at all. Wow. Not too much. Very interesting. <laughs> yes, please. Nice. Wow. How do you say it in Italian? Perfect. Perfecto. Perfecto. I have to tell Francesco about this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. A Brucese food truly reflects the culture and bounty of the land. The pure water that comes from the mountains and the abundant grain of the fields gave rise to the excellent bread and pasta dishes. They even have a unique way of cutting the fresh pasta. They use the guitar strings to cut it. That's why it's called chitara. Okay, let me try it. Mm. Very light. And I think I like to put just a little bit more of olive oil. Their olive oil is perfect. Of course, because of their rich pastoral tradition, meat is the star of the Il Secondo. Lamb chops being my favorite, I just had to try the traditional way of preparing it. Very nice flavor. The meat itself is good. They pair it with some vegetables. Just simple boiled vegetable. They say that the abruzzese dishes are made out of lime and passion. Very simple, not too many spices or uh, the sauces or whatever. I think this one is just a sprinkle of little salt and it's actually perfect. After that amazing lunch, I got to chat with the restaurant's third-generation owner, Carmine Cercone, accompanied by his neighbor, Maria McKay, who has made Pacentro her new home. The restaurant uh, was born uh, 15 years ago, in 1971, with my father and my mother. Mm -hmm. And then I and my wife, in 1918, 1980. Do you cook yourself? Yeah, my wife is the cooker. Oh, I see. I think only for um, service in yes. the room. Mm. So living here is something that is very unique. You live here with the nature. You live yes. here yes. with a good person. Yes. She loves Pacendo no. for this yes. question. Yes. And, and, and so, we won't stay here. We love Pacento also. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe we'll stay here just like you. Well, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's a wonderful place. We love here because we lived in, in Scotland in, in the Hebrides. And what we find here that's very similar 
we eat good food. The, yeah. the Abruzzi cuisine born uh, from uh, natural herbs and um, is a traditional uh, cuisine. Very important um, ricetta, come si dice una ricetta? Recipes. Uh, we, 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 ricetta we, traditional from, recipes. From, from, from here, yeah. from five, fifteen, eighteen hundred years ago. Yeah. 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 And everybody knows how to cook, you know, from there's not a lot of ingredients. If there's not a lot to go around, people can make the most wonderful dishes. Because they're all fresh, yes, fresh meat, fresh, yes. Yes. fresh vegetable. Can, I don't cook very well, uh, very simply, but somebody can come to our house and unexpectedly and you can say, well, I've got some olive oil, I've got some garlic, um, I've got some cheese, and I've bread. got some pasta and some bread and I can make a dinner. Great. Perhaps? That is the magic of this place. Its ability to transform the humblest of ingredients into the most delicious feast. Enough to make you decide to stay for the rest of your life. Up next, I continue to explore the small towns perched on the peaks of Abruzzo, making my way to Scano, getting a closer look a unique culture that has thrived in isolation for thousands of years. I am slowly starting to discover Abruzzo's magic and the spell it casts on anyone who visits. Most of this enchantment can be felt as you visit its small towns. I continue to drive through its scenic mountains with gorges carved by ancient rivers. It was a tricky drive along the narrow roads snaking along the slopes, but the views are definitely rewarding. I caught sight of my next destination. A village of medieval houses packed neatly over a valley, contrasting against the verdant green mountains that guarded its secrets. This is Kano, a town once hidden until it became the subject of some of the world's most famous photographers in the 1950s. Continuing to drive uphill, the view opened up to Scano's stunning turquoise lake. My first stop was along the shore and suspended over the road itself. The small church of Santa Maria Annunziata. This is one of the most beautiful churches here in Scano and it's dedicated to Our Lady of the Lake. The church was built based on a local legend where a traveler was trying to get to the town of Scano amidst the snowstorm. A miraculous light cleared the storm with sunshine and guided him until he reached this very spot. Only after did he realize that he had crossed the entire frozen lake on foot. Since then, plenty of miracles have been attributed to the Madonna del Lago, as seen in the number of ex votos on the wall. Small metal hearts left by the faithful in thanksgiving for answered prayers. The tiny interior is filled with stunning imagery by Italian artists. The altar rests on the natural rock which the church was built on. While the doll-like statue of the miraculous lady is encased behind the altar, The terrace offered a view of Scano's legendary lake, a popular spot for locals, especially during the warmer months. Surrounded by the Marsican Mountains, 
the lake dates back to the end of the last ice age and is one of the cleanest lakes in Italy. Boating, fishing, and swimming are popular activities here, as well as hiking the surrounding trails where rich flora and fauna can be found. In fact, hikers are rewarded by an even more breathtaking view from a vantage point. Lago de Scano's distinctive heart shape adding to the enchanting nature of this place. I made my way to the heart of the town, finding a well-preserved medieval commune laid out on the slopes of the mountain. I'm in the ancient town of Scano. It's a thousand meters above sea level and is listed as one of Italy's most beautiful towns. Throughout its history, Scano remained largely undamaged during periods of war because of its remote location and limited accessibility. The medieval layout means narrow streets and plenty of steps. No wonder everyone here looks half their age. Walking is really one of the best things I enjoyed while in Abruzzo. Exploring the old town, seeing the local residents go about their day, and observing small details that give a glimpse of the place's soul. Stone staircases are often seen outside each house. In olden times, stables and cellars occupy the first floor, with living quarters on top. The staircases give direct access to the second floor, without the need to disturb the animals. Arches are a way of connecting buildings together to give better stability during earthquakes, which also provides a nice little shade from the elements. The Fontana Saraco, fed by ancient water sources, features masks depicting different social classes, which tells one which tap to drink from. It seems that any corner you look at in Scano, you are guaranteed a beautiful photograph. That is exactly what the greatest photographers of the 20th century thought too. Creating iconic images now displayed in major museums around the world. As with the other towns of Abruzzo, Scano residents also practice the transumanza, the seasonal transfer of flocks to a different pasture. In the past, the men would take the sheep out to the pastures and the women were left to run the household and the village. It created a strong matriarchal culture which helped develop Scano's craft industries. Up next, I discover gold in one of Scano's long-standing art forms, interwoven into their pastoral traditions and shaped by the town's history. As I continued to spend time in Scano, I found even more fascinating things about this town. Thanks to old photographs, I learned about the unique way that women used to dress in Scano. It consists of a wide skirt, linen apron, and a bodice whose neck is sewn with fine lace. A jacket with wide sleeves that narrows down at the wrist is closed with gold buttons, as a unique flat headdress is worn over the head. Scholars speculate that the costume has eastern origins, influenced 
by foreign invasions, particularly Islamic culture. The look is completed by an array of different jewelry, which carried a lot of cultural symbols. Unfortunately, it is no longer a common sight to see Scanny's women wearing this beautiful costume, but it is a well-known tradition among the locals. This is what I learned when I visited Dirienzo Jewelry, a family-owned business that grew within the town's history. Armando and Filippo, who belongs to the family's sixth and seventh generation of goldsmiths, respectively, happily welcomed me into their shop. My grandfather uh, in uh, this uh, laboratory uh, made uh, the bottles wow. of the custom in silver. And uh, now uh, I, my brothers, and my son made the javers with the bottles. Mm. Because the custom non used. Not anymore. So. My great grandfather, uh, after the Second World War, Mm -hmm. turn the object button into the jewels. Yeah. And so, uh, start to... Very intricate. Yeah, Very create intricate. Yes. Uh, a different kind of jewels with mm -hmm. uh, with a symbol. Yeah. Uh, this symbol is button. So like necklaces. Right. Or earrings. Yeah. Wow, nice. <laughs> <laughs> or bracelet. Yes. Different shapes, yes. different colors. Very uh, nice. But we see the, the collection and then we we have inspired of, of a different, yeah, different uh, new jewel. Yes. From the traditional dress buttons, generations of the Dirienses goldsmith fashion jewelry based on the local traditions they know. The symbol of Scanno is the star with the heart. One heart. Um, uh, represented the uh, French, the star with yes. the two art represent the love. Why oh, see? Uh, and uh, the most important jewel is that one. Yeah, is the <laughs> presentosa. Yes. So it's a star shaped pendant. And the heart. Uh, inside there are two hearts, mm. so it's for love. Mm. It's an engagement pendant. Oh, That's the. Um, uh, the man give to, to his wife before the wedding day. Mm -hmm. So when the, the other uh, man uh, see <laughs> the, finish, the women, <laughs> so it's okay, it's not free. <laughs> this is the traditional uh, ring mm -hmm. in Scanno. The name is Manuche, so it's little hands. Mm -hmm. We have the end of the man, the end of the women, and in the center, uh, the art. I see. And of course, there is the traditional tombolo jewelry, a combination of the goldsmithing and wool industry of the town. Also the lace. Yeah, the lace. I don't know yeah. how you can work. It's so small. This collection was born mm -hmm. about in about uh, 2010. The lace tradition, so it's in Puna mm -hmm. so it's kind of old mm -hmm. tradition. But it can move almost. Yeah, if we touch yes. the center, yes. so it's really soft because yeah. it's the real uh, wire, like mm -hmm. a cotton wire, the, the women of Scamno twisted mm -hmm. by end. So all of them have to wear glasses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. very hard yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah, I know. <laughs> very hard to see. Over the years, the Dirienz of Goldsmiths have reaped national awards and have had many distinguished clients all over the world. And until today, they continue to breathe life into Scano's ancient traditions, introducing them to the rest of the world. In the last part of my journey across the magical land of Abruzzo, I taste the unique flavors that this land offers and make my way to the verdant valleys and mountains of the Grand Sasso before flying to sea where its towering peaks touch the sky.
This has been your captain, Joy Roa. See you in the next Asian Air Safari.